How's it going, Internet? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation. It's time to get uh, creative sparks flying. It's time to get that uh, imagination all psyched. And it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from Heath Robinson. And if you're not familiar with his work, check right over there. Uh, he was a wonderful illustrator and has such a unique and, and strange and, and quirky imagination with all of his illustrations if you ever heard of like a rube gold machine gold that's how you say it um where it's kind of like you touch a thumbtack which hits uh, pops a balloon and it drops the little balloon thing on a spring that bounces onto a ball that goes around the world and then goes down and drafts neck and into a porcupine's spine and then you get the idea and then it all just turns on a light um but those really quirky, elaborate, large machines. Um, he he is pretty much the other illustrator who had that same um, style in his, in his illustrations as well. Uh, you can see he's got beautiful line work, great composition. But the the, the great thing about uh, Heath Robinson's work is it's just his imagination, and you can tell it's his unique style and mind that brings his illustration work to life and uh, a lot of these illustrations uh, bring to mind uh, Martin Hanford as well the guy who did the Where's Waldo series you can see that there's just a lot of interesting little details always going on throughout his compositions and I think um, I wonder I know there's a few illustrators who, who definitely listed him as a big inspiration I wonder if he was one of them as well um, but definitely I will throw a link to more stuff and more illustrations from him down below if you guys want to check out more of his work I definitely uh, suggest doing that he, he just has uh, such a unique imagination and again great draftsmanship as well on top of that um, but I want to share a quote that's attributed to him as well uh, I unfortunately couldn't find the original source of it but it is attributed to him so we'll go ahead and use that and I thought it was a real fun one for today, and it's, I really have a secret satisfaction in being considered rather mad, and I think uh, if you're going to get into any creative field, you have to have a little bit of madness in you. I think it's always good, and it brings out that unique style that everyone has. So embrace the madness and go and be unique. That being said, let's go ahead and get into some animation. We're continuing on with the Jump Vember. This is uh, an advanced ball rig. It's a free rig you can grab over at Creative Crash. If you're not familiar with the series, what we'll be doing for the rest of the video is we give ourselves like 48 frames or two seconds of animation. But these uh, jump November, which is where we do jump animations every day for the month of November, uh, tend to be a little bit buried from the 48 frames kind of uh, mean. But I go off and I find a rig that I've never used before. It's a free rig, free resource for you guys to play around with. And give ourselves, like I said, uh, around 48 frames or two seconds. Try to keep the whole videos anywhere from half an hour to maybe a little bit over an hour and see what we come up with a little bit of hang out with me while I animate uh, a little bit of instruction or guidance throughout the way but overall the main goal of these videos is to hopefully encourage you guys uh, to go off and create your own stuff and to keep working and pursuing your dreams and also hopefully to inspire you to uh, either try something new today or see the stuff that we're working on and say you can do it better and then go off and create your own stuff as well so whatever you guys are making every day, definitely share it down below so I can give you some thumbs up or encouragement as well. And that being said, let's go ahead and uh, do a little thing here. Start doing some animating. So first thing I want to do, I want to create a couple of little cubes here. And I can't jump. side to the other and back depending on yeah actually kind of time for that 
probably be a little bit of a shorter one today. I apologize. I'm a little bit tired, but it's important to uh, continue on and never give up on whatever it is that you guys want to pursue. So no excuse for me not to do a video if I'm tired. So let's go ahead and uh, don't really have too much posing that I want to start off with. I'll start off pretty much with uh, just the composition here. Let's go ahead and save our file. Remember, it's always good to save multiple versions of the save often, and we are using Autodesk Maya uh, for today's animation. And let's turn everything off except for our node curves, our node surfaces, and our polygons, so we don't uh, key anything we don't need to. And we'll set our first frame to zero. We'll go ahead and cut this to 48, because again, it might do a little bit more, or a little bit less, depends on. So let's go to nine. And we'll anticipate the jump. Again, we're just going to have kind of rough out our timing and our idea here. And let's go to 15. Let's go ahead and square this guy. So we'll go to 18, we'll go to 24, and then we'll bring it over. I don't feel like making a far frame here, so we'll go ahead and raise that up. See, it's very floaty. This is why we're gonna. Um, there's this old adage that um, any sort of computer is usually a horrible in-betweener. So we're gonna need to go in and punch some more keys in there to really get it to go. Otherwise, that's just gonna be just too slow, too floaty, and not really what we want. So let's also. Just look at the timing first. It's okay. Let's look at our spacing now. So we've got 9 to 24, which is 13 frames a section. Cut that down to 23. Just to keep it a little bit even here. So we'll bring our graph layer out. Translate Y and bring that down a little bit. And we'll get 20, we'll bring that down a little bit as well. And then we also want to look at our translate X and keep it so we get a little bit better with the arc here. Oops. Kind of slowing in and slowing out. Slow in, slow out thing there. Let's 
still block. Uh, translating a little bit more here. So we get that little bit of a better arc to it there. And let's go ahead and rotate. This one we really don't want to stretch out there. So we'll stretch it in here, maybe. Looks like about now.
get into a little spell that's 70 frames in effect a time to hand over the file. So now I'll go back to the about or so. A few more frames up to there. Three more frames up to there. So let's see, we've got 70 frames, 14. Do a little bit of that, but so we can get a little bit of something else besides that. this one
so let's go back.
Let me see what other controls we have that we can pet around here. drag in there and then it wants to get back down Let's see for the last let's go ahead and save our file. Let's make the name a little bit a little more precarious. So we'll grab this one and scale it in a little bit tighter. too high. Let's see if we translate Y and just scale it back a little bit. The reverberation feels like it's a little bit too much there. And the last one has its own
still in a nice arc of him that uh, goes across the top, even with the squashing and stretching and everything. a little bit of angle when it's landing. Watch it back later and see if it still plays fairly good. Okay, the landing feels a little funky because it's meant to go the other way. See if you like that better or not. No, I feel like we lost some of the energy there by slowing it down so much. Just kind of polishing the head around the head a little bit more. Because it really centers down and then goes up and a little bit more here. Okay, let's go. It's just continuing the same idea, just letting it bend out a little bit on its own.
think that'll work for today. So let's take a look back at where we started. We're looking at the beautiful, imaginative, uh, mad world, imaginative world of Heath Robinson. And uh, he said, I really have a secret satisfaction in being considered rather mad. So that being said, uh, I, I think it's a, a beautiful quality in any sort of creator or any medium to have that hint of madness in there. Not too far. We can obviously see some people who uh, go a little too far, but a hint of it always helps make you unique, makes you stand out, and makes your work a little more creative than someone who doesn't have. So that being said, thanks for watching. I love you guys lots. Uh, if you did uh, learn something in this one, definitely share it back. Let me know what stuff worked well for you. If you thought there were things that we could have done differently or different approaches, uh, we could definitely spend another hour or so tweaking and polishing, but I think the idea comes across from this one. So uh, keep pursuing your dreams, keep following it, keep working hard every day. Uh, love you guys lots, and we'll see you for some more animation tomorrow.